Okay, folks. Today we are going to use. Okay, folks. Today we are going to use the browser speech synthesis API. Okay, folks. Today we are going to use the browser speech synthesis API to create this bomb. Okay, folks. Today we are going to use the browser speech synthesis API to create this bomb. Five thousand application ready. Smiling pile poo. All right. I hope you enjoyed that introduction. What we're going to be working with today is the speech synthesis API that comes in most modern browsers. Much like we did voice to text a couple days ago, we're now going to be doing text to voice. So let's take a quick look at our HTML that we've got set up here. We've got a select, which is going to contain a list of all of our possible voices. If we look at the answer here, you'll see them here. There's a lot more. I'm currently filtering just for the English ones. Then we also have an input with the name of rate, which is going to change. Hello, I love JavaScript. Hello, I love JavaScript. Thumbs up. How fast the person talks. Hello. You get the point. We also have pitch. Hello. Ah! Oh, boy. Um, and then finally, we've got a text area with the name of text, which uh, is going to contain whatever the person says, right? We're going to write it in there. Now, only important thing we need to know there is that rate, pitch, and text, the names of all of these inputs here, they are important that they are that because the name of them is going to line up with the property on the utterance, which is essentially the, the voice that's going to say it. So those are important. Don't change those. And we've got the stop and speak buttons to start and stop it. Now let's go down here. I've got you some uh, starter code here. We've got a message, which we're going to create a new speech synthesis utterance. And that essentially means what is the person going to say? And on that utterance, it's going to contain information about how fast do they say it? Uh, what is the pitch that they say it? What is the voice that they say it in? And uh, what will they be saying? So all these four things that we have here, those are going to be put onto our utterance. So we're, we're creating a new version of that into message. We have an empty array here, which our voices are going to be dumped into. Um, and then I've just gone ahead and selected the drop down. I selected the rate, the pitch, and the text area all in one go. I call those options. We have the speak button here, which is going to start it, and then the other one that's going to stop it. Good. So what we need to now do is on page load, whatever is in this text area, I want to set that to be the default. So what we'll do here is we'll say message.text equal to, and normally we say hello testing in here. What we want to do is we want to select this box right here and set it to be whatever is in there. So we'll say document.query selector where the name is equal to text and we'll call the value right out of there. So give that a save and a refresh. Open up your, your dev tools here. And if you type in MSG, you should see that we have our speech synthesis utterance. And the text is now equal to hello, I love JavaScript. However, there is no voice being set just yet. So let's go ahead and populate all the different voices. So what we do is we take a global variable. If, if this is a speech synthesis utterance, that's sort of like one thing that a person might say. We also have another global variable called speech synthesis. And what speech synthesis will do is you will, can call dot speak on it and pass it an utterance, which is going to be our message. Now, if I were to do that right now and try call speech synthesis dot speak and pass it our utterance, because the utterance is the thing that we say, it doesn't work just yet. And that's because there is no voice. But we can take that global variable, which is speech synthesis, and we can add an event listener to it. So add event listener. And there is a event called voices changed. And when that happens, we're going to populate our voices. So we're going to make a function called populate voices. And then right before that, we'll make that function. Then what we say is, we will take that voices array that we've declared up here and we'll just overwrite it with this dot get voices. And let's just console log voices, see what we have. So when, and this just can't be called on page load because when speech synthesis loads, it has to fire the voices change because sometimes it'll take a, a hot second in order for it to load. So we need to wait until we run the voices change. So, whoa, look at this. And if you are on a Windows machine, you might not see as many. The Mac comes with a whole bunch of voices built in, which is pretty fun. And you can open it up. Each of these is a voice where they have a name like Alva and uh, a language uh, code that they speak in. 
So what we want to do is loop over all of those speech voices and set them as options in this dropdown. So we'll say const voice options equals, we'll take our voices and we'll map over it because I'd like to map over absolutely everything, put that on its own line here. And we have our voice and from the voice, we're just going to return an option where the value is going to be the voice.name. And then in there, we're also going to put the voice.name, but in brackets, I also want to put the voice lang, just so you can see what language that voice is meant to be. And then once you're done that, we call a quick join on it. And then we will take our voices drop down and set the inner HTML to be voice options. Or if you'd like, you can just put this dot inner HTML right away inside of here. And then you've done away with this one extra line here. So let's take a refresh of that. Refresh your page and you'll see that as soon as the voices load, you'll get a huge drop down of all the possible voices. Now, again, you might not see all these voices, but it looks like Google does include some of their own voices as well for Chrome. Now that those voices are actually loaded on the page, we can take a look at our message here and open it up. There still is no voice on it, but because those voices have been loaded into the page, it will just default to our buddy Alex, which is the default one. So we can now call speech synthesis dot speak, pass it our utterance, which is such a hilarious thing. It's an MSG. And then when you call it, hello, I love JavaScript. Thumbs up. Ah, and then we say message dot text is equal to Wes is cool. And then we could run it again. Wes is cool. So you get the point what's going on here. We've got an utterance. We've got a speech synthesis that will then take that utterance and then talk out whatever we have. But we want to be able to choose one of these from the dropdown, and that doesn't work just yet. So we're going to make another function called set voice. And that is going to be called console log changing voice. That's going to be called when we change from this dropdown. So what is that? We have our voices dropdown. We're going to add an event listener for change. And when that happens, we're going to call set voice. Let's try that. Okay, so changing voice, changing voice. Every time we change this drop down, it's actually changing it. But we don't just want to console log it. What we want to do is we have our, our utterance, which is MSG, and we want to set the voice to be, and we can't just say like Alex or something like that because it's it's not a valid voice property. So what we need to do is find the voice that lines up with the value. And the, the way we can do that is if you were to just console log this dot value, you see Anna and Ellen and Luciana. So we need to find not just the name of it, but if you look at our voices array, we need to find the corresponding speech synthesis voice object. So the way we do that is we'll say msg.voice is equal to voices.find. So we want to find the one where the voice.name is equal to this that value. Essentially what that's doing is it's going to loop over every single one of these voices in the array and it's going to find the one where its name attribute is the same as the option that was currently selected, like Alva, right? So it's going to loop over until it finds a voice.name that's equal to Alva. And then we've gone ahead and set it. So let's try that now. Refresh, go ahead and select Emil. And then we can manually call speech synthesis.speak MSG. Hello, you love JavaScript. Oh, oh, oh. Le haut. oh la la. All right, let's check out Ellen from the Netherlands. Hello. I love JavaScript. Daumen hoch. And Fiona. Hello. I love JavaScript. Thumbs up. I have found that some of these Google ones take a bit to load. So if you do select it and it's not working, maybe just wait a second. I haven't figured that totally out. See. Hello. I love JavaScript. Pulgar hacia there arriba. There we go. Seems to be working nice. Carmit. Hello. I love JavaScript. Good <laughs> It does speak the emojis in the native language, but then just does English words in the accent of that language, which is kind of funny. So we've got that. Um, now what I want to do is make a function that's going to, every time I change one of these things, I want to restart it. 
So that's going to be a function called toggle. And what we're going to do is first, we're just going to cancel anything that we have that is currently speaking. So we're going to call speech synthesis dot cancel and watch this. So if I run Hello. something and immediately I love call JavaScript toggle, thumb. it will cancel it right there. That's what cancel will do. Stop it from speaking. And then we'll just restart the entire thing, which is speech synthesis dot speak the message. Then we'll go back up to the set voice and just call toggle on the end. So now we'll go to Carmi. Hello, I love JavaScript. So every time you change. Hello, you love JavaScript. Hello. You get the point, right? It's going to stop it and start it again. You can also pass a flag here. I'm going to call start over because sometimes you might want to uh, call put pass false. So it will not restart itself. And that's what you can pass as false. So I'm going to say if start over and it's by default going to be true. So you don't have to pass anything unless you explicitly want it to not start over. And then we run it like that. Double check this is still working. Hello, I love JavaScript. Hello, I love JavaScript. I'm call toggle Pulgar. false and it will stop it. Whereas toggle itself will just Hello. restart Hello. it and toggle with false will stop it all. That's what this if statement does here. Good. Next up, what we want to do is work with our rate, our pitch, as well as our message. So we're going to go down here and we're going to take all of our options, which let me take a look at what of our what are our options? Options. Options are three inputs that the slider, the second slider, and the text area. So we'll take all of our options here. The options dot for each option, option dot add event listener, and we're going to listen for the change event. And when that happens, we are going to run a function called set option, which we'll then code here. Function set option. And inside of that function, we could let's just do this console log this dot name and this dot value. So when I slide this rate here, it's going to tell me oh, I got to go to all the rate has changed to 0 0.3. The pitch has changed to 0 0.4. The pitch is at 1.9. Wes is cool. And then I click away the text area. The text property has changed to I love JavaScript. Wes is cool. So now we've bound all of these options. When they change, we know what property will change, which is this dot name and what it was changed to, which is this dot value. So we simply need to take our message and set what property changed this dot name to what changed this dot value. And then we can run the the thing we can stop it and start it over again. So let's try that now. So I'm going to change the rate up. Hello, I love hello, 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 I love hello, I love hello, hello, I love JavaScript. Thumbs up. And I'll say Wes is cool, and you got to tab away or click away. Wes is cool. And then it will rerun that. Why? Because these things have changed. We're also doing that on here. Wes is cool. Awesome. Then these buttons right here, we got to listen for a click on them. So we'll take our speak button, which is the the speak one right here. So we'll say speak button dot add event listener click. When that happens, we are going to run the function toggle, and that's just going to manually run it. Hello, I love JavaScript. Thumbs up. You can put some poops in there. It's pretty funny when you put emojis in there. Smiling pile of poo eyes. Gramada zumbitoare de caca. I like it. Oh, remind me. Well, you're not going to remind me. We should filter this list for just English ones if, if that's what you're looking for. But we do have to run our speak button. And then we also need to listen for a click on our stop button. So when the stop button is clicked, Toggle false. Oh, how do you do that, folks? How do you pass an argument to a function? Well, you might think like, OK, I could I could I can make it a function like this and then just say toggle false. Let's see if that works. So hello. OK, that works, but that seems a little bit big. Is there another way we could do it? Well, you, you can't call toggle false like that because that's just going to run on page load. Hello, 
I love JavaScript. See, Thumbs it doesn't up. Do, it doesn't do anything because this function is not returning a function. So, okay, huh? So what we could do, there's there's a couple different ways we could do it. You can call dot bind, pass it the value of this, which is going to be nothing, and then pass it your art your first argument, which is going to be false. And that's what bind does. Is you take a function and then you call it in the context of this and pass it an argument of false. Hello. I love works great. Or uh, this is somewhat popular in React right now. And you could just do an inline function, arrow function right here, where you say toggle false. So downside to that is this is creating another function. Uh, same with bind and same with the function, but it is another way to do it. Hello. I love Java. And it's really not that big of a deal in this case, unless I was creating lots and lots and lots of these. So we've got that. Last thing I wanted to do is filter this list for only ones that are English, like our friend Karen from Australia. So what we'll go do before we map, we'll simply add a quick filter in there where the voice, and we say if the voice dot lang dot includes en. And that should just trim that list down to ones that include en before we map over it. So now when I refresh, we only see a smaller subset of the list of the ones that we have there. So that is the Voice Enator 5000. It's actually pretty simple to get all of this code up and running. We just created a couple different functions that will listen for when the different elements are changed, and then it says it for us. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I'd love to see what you make of it, and I will see you tomorrow.